Okay everyone, thanks for tuning in again. I'm back again with another Scale Hive update. Today is May 15th, so it's been a week since the last video. And uh, first things first, I'm going to take the weights. So starting with the yellow hive, we're at... This one's at 56.5 pounds. And then the green hive, 61 pounds for the green lid hive. So what's been happening the last week, the weather has been pretty good. Uh, we've only got really a couple days of rain. And I don't know if you can tell, it's been raining all morning here. I think it's just stopping and uh, should be in the clear for the rest of the day. Um, so the dandelions have been out for the last week, which has been good. I know the bees have been bringing in lots of dandelion pollen and some nectar, I think. That's why these uh, scale hives have really been gaining a significant amount of weight. I've taken a couple um, points in days past as well. Uh, so I'll update the graph here for you right now and you can see that over the last seven days they definitely have been putting on weight. Um, along with that their populations are growing. So we're going to have a look and see and make sure that everything's doing fine. Okay so yellow hive first seems to be the way we do things. Um, just so you know it is about the middle of the day here now but there's really not a lot of bees flying because the rain is just stopping, so they should get going as the sun comes out here a little bit more. But this will give you an idea about the populations of these colonies since pretty much all the bees are at home right now. Just set that down there. Okay, since all the bees are at home, I'm just going to be a little more gentle than normal maybe, use a bit more smoke and have a look. Okay, there's a nice frame of brood. Set this down. So it shouldn't be a big deal to work these bees like this. They're fairly calm. And I am just having a look, just in case there's any um, queen cells starting to be built. In case they're thinking about swarming, but I think it's, it's too early for them to really be starting that behavior. But you never know, it's worth having a look any chance you get. So I'm going to make sure I look at a few frames with brood and make sure there's no queen cells starting. And here you can see all these, um, a lot of these brood frames that have been full for a while are really hatching out now. So that's the empty spaces in the middle that um, the queen has laid back in with eggs, but there's a lot of young bees in this colony now. A lot of frames like this with um, capped brood that is emerging and then she's been laying back in as that brood hatches out. Just getting across this brood chamber a little further to have a look. Lots of capped brood. There's another frame with capped brood. We're looking at at least seven, seven good frames like this. With lots of brood right now. So I think I'll show you some close-ups of these young bees. So here's a young bee, you can see she's got a lot of hair on her thorax and head, even right up between her eyes, compared to some of the older bees around her. And she would have just emerged, you know, within the day, likely within a few hours by the way she looks. Here's a bee that is emerging from her capping, from her cell. The other bees are sort of walking over her, but she chews her way out. She might get a bit of help from other bees, but usually they do a good job of getting themselves out of the cells. And there's a bee that is just emerging now. And so I'm just going to close this back up. 
Actually, there's a bit more rain coming down right now. I might take a quick break. Okay, that was a bit of a passing shower. There might be another one, I'm not really sure, but I'm gonna try and get through this other hive um, because I don't have much time. So, the green lid hive. Looks good, full of bees. The one thing I was sort of worried about with this colony was those like three frames of honey that were out here on the outside. And I was actually thinking about pulling one away because I don't want, I don't want the uh, queen to be at all limited in how much space she has to lay in this brood chamber. So let me have a look on the outside here and I'll make a decision. See like this frame, that's just 100% honey. And like I said, a lot of that is likely stored since last fall. Most of it is. Um, and then the little bit that they've been bringing in, if there was empty space, they'd probably put it over there too. So they've got one solid frame of honey this very outside frame, it'll be two. And then this, uh, that's not actually that much honey in there. There's some empty space, but some of that comb isn't the best. Okay, and then the queen's laying brood. There's our, we've got our yellow queen right here. So there is like three solid frames of honey on that outside. Um, I'm just going to set that in gently with the queen in it. And just like the other one, um, I like to look at a few frames with brood on them and make sure that there are no queen cells in development. There's good frames of brood, lots of emerging bees, just like the other one. Population's not quite as high, but it looks good. And there's no signs that, that any queen cells are being started. So, I can put this back together, but I think I will um, remove one of these honey frames on the outside. Okay, so here's that heaviest honey frame. I'm gonna get all the bees off of here. Just like that. You can also use a brush to get the last of them off if you want. Um, and then I'll replace it one second. So I'm gonna replace it with this frame. And this is um, a frame that has only been used for honey in the past. It's extracted comb. Uh, it's totally empty now. And this is why I like, one, using some deep honey supers so that I end up with frames like this that I can add to nukes or replace comb and brood chamber with. Um, and it's also the reason, you know, I like to use a queen excluder and then honey supers because my honey frames, frames that are just used for honey, always look really nice, light, clean wax. Um, that's really good for the bees to go down into the brood chambers whenever I want it. Um, so two honey frames on the outside now. And I'm going to stick this empty one right in there. And I'm sure the queen will get laying on that rather than them having to redistribute honey and all that. Okay. So then um, one other decision I have made now, I think not so much based on this hive, but based on the first hive we looked at. I'm gonna add the first supers today. I know it's only May 15th, that's earlier than I typically would. I haven't added supers to any other hives yet, but I probably will be by the end of this week or the very beginning of next week. Um, so I'll be right back with some honey supers. Okay, I'm gonna do this hive first while I was just in it and I'll go back to the first hive. Um, what I usually do Oh, okay, here's something. I just lifted off this um, inner cover and I could just lay a queen excluder and then a super on, but I took a quick look and my queen 
is actually on the inner cover. So if I didn't uh, do anything about that and put this inner cover back on top of the supers, my queen would have been up in the super, uh, which would have been a problem. Normally I would uh, shake all those bees onto the brood chamber anyway, um, but I just noticed her really quickly there. Uh, I'm just gonna let her run down between the frames. So there she goes. And before I put the queen excluder, sometimes, in this case, I'll use a fair amount of smoke just to get these bees off the inner cover or off the top bars. And then any big knobs of, um, of wax, I like to just scrape them off. Maybe I'll, I'll pick those up and, and save them. Okay, so the queen excluder sits on that nicely. And then I've got one honey super to put on there. Now, this, um, so this isn't necessarily what I always do. A lot of times, or usually if I'm using these uh, medium depth supers, uh, I would really recommend putting on two right away. I'm only putting on one today because I know I'm sort of babying these hives. Um, and, and I know I'm going to be back here within a week, probably next week I'm going to add one more to this. Just for today, I'm just putting one on them. So that is the green colony dealt with. And I'll put a super on our yellow hive. Okay, so the same thing, use a fair amount of smoke. I'll get these bees off the top bars. Okay, so queen excluder lays flat, sometimes that sits nicely, and then my honey super. And that's the yellow hive taken care of. Just really basic sort of beekeeping there. Made sure I had some space in this brood chamber, um, knocked out one of those honey frames and then added supers. And like I said, with medium supers, I usually add two at a time, but I'm coming right back um, and I'll probably add a second one next week. But what we have to do is weigh these now with the empty supers and get an idea of what those weigh. Okay, so our yellow hive is now at 71 pounds and our green hive is now at Okay, and our green hive is now at 72.5 pounds. So remember, that's with a frame of honey removed, an empty frame put in the brood chamber, and the empty honey supers. So 72.5 and 71. And so I just wanna remind you, if you are interested in these videos, the scale hives in particular, on my channel, I've just created a playlist of the scale hive videos. So they'll all be in one place. You can just click on my channel name there. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, now is a good time to do so to keep up with these hives as they go through the summer. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.